A lot of us are sleeping on AI. Ever since ChatGPT launched late last year, there has been an explosion of different AI tools, all of which can really improve our lives. But I think a lot of people think that AI is just for the tech nerds, but it's really not. It's for the everyday person. AI right now is our friend. So before AI steals our jobs, I think everyone has a responsibility to look for ways to improve their lives with AI. In this video, I'm going to go through a couple ways that I've improved my life using AI. We'll talk about ways that can save you money, save you time, and just generally improve the quality of your life. One way you can start using AI today is in your job search process. If you're someone who was recently laid off, I know especially people in the tech industry, this is extremely top of mind. A lot of people are dealing with layoffs right now. ChatGPT can really help you throughout the entire job search process. One of the first places you can use ChatGPT is in actually creating your resume. You can feed ChatGPT bullet points and it will write a compelling description section for your resume. It will do the proofreading, it will do the editing, it will choose the most important stats that will make you look the best and tell you exactly what you need to highlight. Once you've used ChatGPT to help you develop your resume, then what you can actually do is you can put in the job description alongside with your resume and ChatGPT will even create unique resumes for that specific job description. And this is not just for resumes too. ChatGPT can actually help you write your cover letter. So you can feed ChatGPT the job posting, you can feed ChatGPT your resume, and then ChatGPT can actually give you a really compelling cover letter that you can submit for that job role. And then finally, once you've applied to jobs and you have to start interacting with recruiters and different interviewers, ChatGPT can really handle the back and forth and help you write professional emails so that you can get the job. It can even handle tricky email situations like negotiating your job offer. So I can't lie, this is my favorite use case of AI, which is art generation. There are so many amazing AI art generation tools that exist right now. For example, you have Jasper AI, you have OpenAI Dali, and you also have Midjourney, which is my personal favorite. It's so cool because all these tools can take text and immediately turn it into a visual, which is amazing. So ideas that you have been thinking about wanting to see transformed into artwork can happen easily. As someone who doesn't have any art skills, I cannot draw, I cannot paint. This is mind blowing to me because I could have artistic ideas and thoughts, but I was never able to translate them to actual physical art. Of course, I could learn to be an artist, but I don't have the time for that. It's not just art that AI can generate, but it can also generate logos. It can generate UI for web applications or websites. So it can be really helpful in all those different mediums. But in my case, I wanted to use AI to help me decorate my apartment. So I recently moved to a new apartment and I don't really have an artistic eye. I wanted to use Midjourney to generate some really unique pieces of art for me that I could use in a gallery wall in one of my apartment walls. And I wanted it to be a remix of very famous art from the Renaissance, from the Impressionist period. So what I did was I actually typed in these prompts. So one of my favorite pieces of art is The Last Supper by Da Vinci. And I wanted every character in The Last Supper to be a baby drinking bottles of milk. And Mid Journey was able to generate that for me. Another thing I wanted was I wanted the infamous Birth of Venus by Botticelli to be a black woman with blonde braids. And again, Mid Journey really succeeded in achieving that goal. I wanted Van Gogh's Starry Night to be of New York City. And again, Mid Journey succeeded in making that text a reality. And this is just with my beginner level skills at prompting. There are some people who are extremely advanced at creating prompts for AI that can create beautiful artwork. But I do have to say that I cannot leave this section without talking about a little bit of the murky ethics of AI art. One of the things I really want to point out is that a lot of the art that's generated by this AI was trained on art created by real humans, and they didn't consent to having their artwork be put into these AI models. And also there's going to be a huge societal impact, copyright issues that come from having AI generated art. Like artists are already extremely underappreciated, underpaid. And now imagine what is the incentive of an artist to create art if an AI will eventually steal that art and add it to its model so that it can eventually generate art similar to that. And what's also the incentive for other people to purchase art from artists when they can get art easily from this AI. So there's going to be a lot of ethical things that need to be considered when you think about AI generation. But for me right now, I have enjoyed using it. I'm not going to use it on my gallery while I actually decided to just pay for art created by local artists, but it has been really cool to play around with. So let's talk about one of the more controversial use cases of AI, which is how it's being used by students to complete their schoolwork and also to learn new skills. So I'm so lucky that I'm not a student during this time because the temptation to learn nothing from school and just rely on AI to write my essays would have been so strong for me. But I actually think AI can be a really helpful tool and there are more ethical ways for students to use it to actually help them with their coursework. For example, there's a tool called Otter AI where students can actually record lectures, get notes from the lecture, as well as 
summaries from the lecture. And with the notes from that lecture, they can use another tool called Wizdolia that can create flashcards from a set of your notes. This can be a really helpful tool for students who are looking to make sure that the information that they learn in class sticks. But outside of these ethical ways of using artificial intelligence, students can also, of course, use AI to help them write essays. For example, you can use Notion AI and ChatGPT. If you provide it with an outline, it will write a full essay for you, which is honestly really crazy. And even though there are some new AIs right now that can detect if an essay was written by an AI, it's still something that's gonna be a huge concern for students and professors in the future. My programmers, you guys are not alone. There are also two tools that are really good for helping you with programming and helping you learn new programming languages, which are ChatGPT, of course, and GitHub Copilot. Both tools can actually help you finish functions, help you finish projects and learn new programming languages. Speaking of studying or learning a new skill, it's really hard to learn something by yourself without structure or a community to support you. That's why I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Practicum. Practicum is an online coding bootcamp that's accessible for people with all different backgrounds. Whether you're interested in software engineering, data analytics, data science, or Q&A engineering, Practicum has a program for you. If you're trying to figure out your next career decision, Practicum also offers a totally free quiz that only takes two to three minutes to complete. It's an easy first step to figuring out your future role in the tech industry. Practicum also has its own platform, which was made to help you learn faster and intuitively with digestible lessons and effective reinforcement. Plus, they also have an opportunity for students to get real world practice with a real company during the program through their externship program. In the bootcamp, you'll work on learning business projects and get detailed feedback from pros working in the field. And if you're not hired within six months after graduation, Practicum will refund you your tuition. If you're interested in getting into the tech industry through an online bootcamp, please visit my link in the description box and don't forget to use my promo code BACOLA for a 20% discount on any program. Thank you again, Practicum, for sponsoring this video. Let's go to the next way to use AI. Let's start with the first way I've started using AI, which is in my fitness and my health routines. I put on a little bit of weight during the pandemic and I've been trying to lose it ever since. I know it's been three years, but I've really been leveraging AI and specifically ChatGPT, OpenAI's AI language model to help me reach my fitness and health goals. So the way I've been using AI to do this is I created a prompt for ChatGPT, listing out my weight, my height, my lifestyle, my current fitness level, my dietary restrictions, and told it the goal I wanted to reach and by the time I wanted to reach that goal. So basically the information you would provide a nutritionist or a dietitian. And almost immediately, ChatGPT was able to develop an exercise routine and a nutrition plan that could last me an entire week, all to help me reach my goal by the specific time that I wanted to reach it. But it wasn't enough for me to do that. I wanted to get even deeper into the details and I wanted ChatGPT to be even more precise in its nutrition plan. So I asked ChatGPT to give me my nutrition plan in grams to make my calorie tracking way more accurate in ChatGPT. PT was able to do that easily. I also am such a huge fan of different fitness trainers, specifically Natasha Ocean that's here on YouTube. And I wanted ChatGPT to create an exercise plan very similar to one that she would create. And ChatGPT was also able to do that. If you look at a plan on Natasha's website versus the generated plan on ChatGPT, you'll see that it's actually very similar. On top of all of these things, I wanted ChatGPT to actually give me a grocery list that I could take to the grocery store and buy all of my items that week. And again, ChatGPT was able to do that as well. But I do want to talk about some limitations of using ChatGPT for your nutrition and fitness goals. For example, I gave ChatGPT a goal of losing 20 pounds in one month, which for my frame and body, it's not a very realistic goal. And ChatGPT gave me a calorie goal amount of 950 calories, which is extremely unhealthy for a woman to eat. Even though it did really flag that this was a concern and that you should check in with a dietitian and registered personal trainer. So right now, I don't think ChatGPT will replace a certified nutritionist and a certified personal trainer, but I do think it can really help you living a healthier lifestyle and help you reach your wellness goals. So another more ethical way that I'm using AI is in planning my travel itinerary. So I plan to do a lot of traveling this year. I'm going to Berlin and Amsterdam and I don't really have a lot of local knowledge about where to visit and like where to stay, what historical sites to visit, what restaurants to visit. This is where AI is going to be really helpful for me. Usually I would just go into Google and get an itinerary that's freely available by a creator. But now I can actually use that and also ChatGPT to help me create my travel itinerary. I just feed in ChatGPT my locations and it can give me the best hotels to go to, the best restaurants, and the historical sites that are must-see in that location. 
these are a couple ways that you can start using AI today, but I will say that this just scratches the surface of the possibilities of AI. And we're also just in the early stages, so I can only imagine what the next five years will look like in the AI tool space. So I think if you can, I would do the little bit of research to learn about AI and see how you can integrate AI into your life. And before we close out this video, I do want to talk a little bit about the ethical concerns of AI because I am scared, y'all. If you think about how technology progresses, it progresses very fast. And I'm scared to see what AI will look like in five years. I'm scared about the fact that there are going to be a lot of jobs lost due to AI. And I wonder if our policymakers are going to have alternatives where people can still earn money without having to work. Another thing I'm concerned about is if AI is seen as a single source of truth, what type of biases will be propagated by the artificial intelligence? Because we all know that algorithms are biased. And if a developer has a bias, it's not crazy to think that it could appear in an algorithm. It's going to be dangerous if AI can perpetuate stereotypes, misinformation, and discrimination. Just to wrap this section up, we're definitely going to need developers. We're going to need policymakers who are going to be able to create good laws and create good products that can leverage the power of AI, but also make sure that AI doesn't cause too much harm. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to tap that subscribe button and make sure to tap that like button too. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next video.